in front of me are some 3D prints. Not just any 3D prints. They're designed and modeled by AI. Watch it to the end because I'm going to show you how I made it. 3D modeling is arguably one of the most desirable skills in modern society. From breathing life into our favorite video game characters, to shaping our VR and AR experiences, to facilitating complex robotic simulations, 3D modeling has it all. And did I mention I spent half a decade mastering this skill at college? Oh, those years. But we'll save that story for another day. Let's not digress. You see, despite its allure, 3D modeling demands a heavy investment of time and knowledge. Let's not forget, it often comes with a hefty price tag for the softwares. Recently, there are also some AI applications that can generate 3D models, such as this software Spline or this one 3dfy.ai, but they all have certain limitations. On top of that, they will either put you on a waitlist or charge you for a monthly subscription just to download a simple model. But wait, let's meet the new kid in town, Shape E, which is what I used to generate these 3D models completely for free. Shape E goes beyond generating 3D animations from text and images. You can also export the models into formats that are compatible with your preferred 3D modeling software, as well as 3D printing file formats. And guess what? OpenAI, or should I say Close AI, has made it open source. So what's Shape E? Shape E is a conditional generative model for 3D assets. And it's unique because it directly generates parameters of implicit functions that can be rendered as both textured meshes and nerves. Whoa, 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 hold on. What's nerve? Nerve, aka neural radiance field, is a deep learning method used for 3D scenes. It's often used in VR and AR to convert three-dimensional visual effects into a real-world environment. Think of Google Maps, unlike point cloud methods that stores data of a bunch of points. NERF calculates the visual effects of all angles of every picture you see through functions. The dual output capability of Shape E allows for versatile rendering and easy integration into various 3D applications. The training of Shape E is a two-stage process. First, a transformer-based encoder is trained to produce parameters for creating 3D assets. Then a diffusion model is trained on these parameters. You'll find all the details about Shape E, including model weights, source code, and examples on its GitHub page. The official paper is also available on archive.org. I will leave the links in the description. You can also see here in the GitHub page, some generated 3D models are provided by the researchers with the prompts they used. All right, all that technical jargon aside, let's get into building. We are going to use a three-tier Google Colab for this demonstration and demonstrate the first example, which is text to 3D. You notice there are also two other examples. The image to 3D works similar to text to 3D. I will briefly touch on, and for the third one, it will take more setup. So we will skip that for this video. I have here on the left opened a new Google Colab file and renamed it to Shape E. And on the right, I have the Shape E GitHub page open. Configure the virtual settings to use GPU hardware acceleration here. Choose to use the GPU type. Since we're using a free tier account, select T4. Then let's connect to a runtime. Now we're ready to start. To get started, the first thing we need to do is to clone the project into our Google Colab. Use git clone command and execute the first cell. This will start cloning the project. Then run the second command, which is cd into the project we just cloned. Next, we need to install dependencies with the pip install command. Copy this command from the GitHub page. You need to add an exclamation mark here. When the deployment is complete, I will clear the output for you to see better. Then we can come over and open the first example. Once it's opened, copy the first piece of code, which is to import related libraries. A quick tip here, you can press Shift-Enter to execute. 
Once that's finished, copy the second piece of code. This line of code is to specify if there's no GPU available, use CPU. For the GPU, it is using CUDA, NVIDIA's computing architecture. Copy the third piece of code and run it. These lines are used to load the model text 300M. It is to use text prompts. There is some waiting time here because we need to load a file about 2 gigabytes. Once the loading is complete, let's copy the fourth piece of code. It is used to set the model parameters. The first parameter, batch size, is to set the number of 3D models to be generated. The example is set to generate 4 by default, and the prompt parameter is text prompt to generate a shark. For now, we change the batch size as 1 and leave the prompt as a shark and see what happens. In order to see the rendering results, we need to copy the fifth piece of code. This code is to specify the rendering mode and resolution. The nerf method mentioned in the paper is used here. You can see that you can also use STF method, which is the mesh method. The size is the resolution. By default, it is set to 64 pixels. The higher the value, the more memory will be used, and thus the lower the generation speed. Let's just use the default value and generate once to see what happens. We can see that it has generated a 3D animation of a shark. The speed of generating low-resolution 3D files is pretty fast, but the quality is rough. It outputs the results as an animation in GIF format. We can download and save it. Now, let's see how we can export this into a 3D printable format. Let's copy the last piece of code and execute it. This code is to output an editable model file in both PLY and OBJ format. Since we will 3D print it, we only need the OBJ format. You can also specify the name. Let's change it to shark. Once that's finished, the generated files can be found in the content directory. We will download them later. For now, let's try some other prompts. Let's try something creative, a banana shoe. I also changed the batch size to four, so we can pick from four different versions. But of course, the generation time will be longer. Cool. Four banana shoes are now generated. Let's generate the OBJ files and change the file name to banana shoe. Once that's finished, I wanted to see if it can generate something useful. So let's try a phone holder. Hmm, interesting. I feel like it's trying to do it. Um, and the last one is kind of creative but I don't think any of these are functional. You can keep playing with it. I think I will skip generating the OBJ files for these weird non-functional phone holders. You can also try adjusting other parameters like batch sizes and resolutions on your own. For now, we will go into our project content folder and download the OBJ files we generated for 3D printing. Before we start 3D printing, let's quickly go through the second example generate a 3D model through picture prompts. For the most part, it is the same as text-to-3D, with a few differences. You can see the model name used here is different from the first example. The model image 300M is used, which is for image prompts. The execution speed of this code in the model is much slower. Before executing the fourth code, we need to prepare a picture and then upload the picture to the content directory. Here, they recommend to use a PNG file with a transparent background. They also provided an example image. So when you run it, you can just replace the example file they gave. Okay, so let's move on to the most exciting part of this video. Let's process this model and print it. To slice the model for 3D printing, I will be using Cura, which is a free and open source slicer by Ultimaker. I have already configured my printer here, which is Creality Ender 3 Pro. Let's import the shark model we just created. Scale it down a little bit. Move it to the desired print space on the print bed. You can also use Cura to fix the mesh if there are holes in the mesh. Other than that, I won't change the settings too much. Just make sure to print the support. Then slice it. After the slicing is done, quickly preview it save it on the SD card and take it to the printer. You can repeat this process for the other models generated.
Okay, so I did some simple cleanups and I'll show you the results. This is the shark. Uh, I printed some details like the mouth of the shark as well as its limbs. It's not super detailed, but looks like a shark. Next up, we have a chair that looks like a computer. Definitely looks like a chair. And I guess the back of it looks like the screen of the computer. And next up, we have the banana shoe. Unfortunately, I don't have yellow filaments, so we have a blue banana shoe. And you see the back of the shoe looks like the tip of the banana. So very interesting. And next up, we have a spaceship. It's not very detailed and it also has some holes in the mesh, but I guess it looks like a spaceship from afar. I guess, I hope. Okay, sure. The three models generated by Shapey are a bit rough around the edges and the process demands substantial computing resources. But it's a start, just like GPT-2 and GPT-3. I believe that the near future holds great potentials for 3D model generation from prompts. And who knows, it might just leave us astonished, just like GPT-4 did. I will also put both text-to-3D and image-to-3D collab files I created available for you in the description. You can just grab them directly instead of building from scratch. Smash that like button if you like it. Comment for suggestions. Share it with your friends if you have them. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the updates. Lastly, I want to thank every single one of you for watching my videos. Your feedback has been the fuel for me to work hard. Continue to improve my content for BruteFab. And until next time, happy printing. What I used to generate 